welcome back guys and today we'll be looking at autonomic nervous system i apologize for the delay that has been in making this video but then again i have to get a few equipments like the webcam ready and now finally you can see me and i think it'll be more personal this way so autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts so we have the sympathetic system and then we have the parasympathetic system okay the sympathetic also called as the adrenergic system and parasympathetic is the cholinergic okay we'll be talking mainly at the pharmacology of it while looking at the physiology of it okay i think this is one of the main reasons why students face difficulty while they are looking at the pharmacology because they don't have a perfect understanding of the physiology so if you understand the physiology like i tell you in this video it's going to be quite simple when you're thinking about application of any drug okay just understand the physiology that i'm going to tell you in this video and even the physiology the pharmacology anything related to autonomic nervous system is going to be much much easier this is how you're supposed to study autonomic nervous system yeah so first off what is autonomic nervous system so it's auto it's an involuntary nervous system so there's a part of the nervous system which deals with your involuntary actions yeah mainly your heart rate your lacrimation your digestion your urination and all those so it's the autonomic part of the body and it has two parts sympathetic and parasympathetic as we already said now both of them are exact opposite to each other okay each work exactly opposite to each other now that being said how so first mainly be perfect with the concept that the parasympathetic system does everything opposite of the sympathetic system then we look at how they work okay so we'll draw a human yes brain and we give him a chest we give him some hands okay so he has some lungs he has a heart he has a gi system and he has a renal system hands and legs now here we we'll look at the adrenergic system and here we we'll look at the cholinergic then again cholinergic is the parasympathetic adrenergic is the sympathetic now remember adrenergic system mainly deals with excitation so anything that is required for your flight or fight response is taken care of by the adrenergic system again adrenergic system imagine that it deals with nothing but flight and fight response that's it and cholinergic does exactly opposite of it okay so you are in a flight and fight response how should be your mental condition you should be alert so adrenergic system causes alertness next we come to the eyes it causes midriasis what does midriasis mean pupillary dilation why do you need pupillary dilation because you need more amount of light entering your eyes so that you have more information during a fight you need the information of all your surrounding areas and hence you need more information entering your eyes that's why you need midriasis okay next we come to the respiratory system it increases the rate of respiration and it causes bronchodilation so because of increase in respiratory rate more amount of oxygen is going inside because of bronchodilation also more amount of air is going inside yeah you need that more amount of oxygen while you're in a fight because you need more energy and what happens to the heart the same thing increase in heart rate increase in force of contraction so we have increased chronotropic and increased inotropic effect so far so good next the gi system when we come to the gi system now imagine just imagine while you are in a fight mode 
do you have time to go to the bathroom no you don't have time to go to the bathroom while you're in a fight response so decrease in gi motility you ha don't have time to go to the bathroom decrease in gi motility decrease in gi secretions okay if you're not eating you don't need to go to the bathroom do you have time to eat no and hence that also decreases and increase in sphincter tone okay and same thing goes for the renal system while you're in a flight response do you have time to go to the bathroom no so increase in sphincter tone and one more thing is the liver while you're in fight mode you need more energy so that's where the liver comes in what does the liver do the liver increases glycogenolysis you need more energy so the glycogen is broken down to increase the amount of energy produced and same thing goes for the fat even the fat adipose tissue undergoes lipolysis okay this is the adrenergic system for you you have mental alertness you have midriasis because you need more information bronchodilation increase in respiratory rate increase in heart activity decrease in gi activity decrease in renal activity and increase energy production by liver and the adipose tissue because you're in a flight and fight mode and you need these things the exact opposite happens in a core energetic system just imagine exact opposite imagine a lazy person and this is how we will look at this now when we come to the brain it doesn't cause much effect because acetylcholine which we have as a prototype drug cannot cross the blood brain barrier so you don't have much effects to be studied there when we come to the eyes we have the exact opposite we have meiosis here we had midriosis here we have meiosis and in the respiratory system exact opposite we have decrease in respiratory rate and we have bronchospasm so this is also clinical point for you that's why cholinergics are contraindicated in case of asthma and adrenergics are indicated in case of asthma because their effect of respiratory rate and exact opposite here we have decreased heart rate we have bradycardia increased gi motility okay and we have contraction of the urinary bladder and relaxing sphincters of gi and urethra yeah so exact opposite of whatever we saw in the adrenergic system we are going to face in the cholinergic system exact opposite of it and one more thing that you will have to notice the exocrine secretions yeah the exocrine secretions increase in case of parasympathetic stimulation what do i mean by exocrine i mean things like sweat tears saliva gi secretions these things increase in case of parasympathetic stimulation and in case of sympathetic stimulation you not going to have this so if you think of the autonomic nervous system in such a way it's going to be easy for you to learn your pharmacology as well and your physiology okay keep this in mind while you're learning your drugs while you're learning your nervous system and it's going to be much much easier so i hope i helped you guys hope this simplified your understanding of the autonomic nervous system thank you for watching subscribe like and comment i'll see you in my next video bye